today you might need to have a cushion or a block handy if it means that you can be more comfortable when you're sitting uh, and moving in and out of balance positions. You may also want to be near a wall if that helps with balance and support while you're moving in single leg motion. Um, but otherwise you shouldn't really need anything other than enough space to stretch your arms and legs out into a standing position um, or lying on the floor. So um, we're going to start by connecting with the breathing um, and the breath just to ground ourselves and come into the moment. Uh, so if you want to place your hands either resting on your knees um, or one hand on your chest and one hand on your stomach, you could be sitting on the floor, you could be kneeling or you could be sitting on a chair, that's fine. And we just want to take a moment to connect with the breath. So if it helps, you can gently close your eyes and making sure that you're sitting and breathing comfortably. You just want to bring the attention to whether the movement of the breath is going to the stomach or the chest. And we're going to take about 10 breaths here, so I just want to be focusing on the sensation of the breath moving in through the nose or the mouth. And where you feel it's going to in the body. Whether that's the rise and fall of the ribs or the stomach. Maybe you feel it in your back, around the rib cage, in the spine. And if you notice your mind is wandering, just bring it back to focus on the breath. We're going to take two more breaths here. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and bring your hands to rest somewhere, maybe on your knees. So, um, the first part of this uh, session, we're going to look at the movements in the neck and the upper body. So we're going to be sitting for that. So as long as you're comfortable still, we can remain in this seated position. And the first movement will be for the neck. So we're going to take our fingers out, our arms are straight, and our spine is nice and upright. We're going to take our fingers out to touch the ground on either side of us. So the first movement will be to breathe in and elongate the spine upwards and lift the chin. And now we're going to take our nose into a circle, draw a circle out to the right. So exhaling as we move out to the right and then down, drawing the first half of our circle. And then as we come up on the left side, we're going to breathe in so that our chin is lifted and we're looking upwards. So we're going to repeat that movement again going out to the right as we exhale and down. Drawing a big circle, we're going to finish the circle by coming up. Breathing in by the left. So let's do five of these in total. So we want three more. So breathing out and to the right and down. Breathing in, out to the left and up. Two more. If you want to walk your fingers out a little further, that feels good. You should feel the stretch in the neck, maybe even down the arms. I can feel the stretch all the way down to my elbow, so let's make this the last one. Coming up to breathing in, the chin rest lifted. If you want to take a little moment just to kind of stretch out and loosen up a bit. It's quite intense if you've got a lot of tension in your shoulders. So we're going to repeat that in the opposite direction, just to even it out. So taking the deep breath, walking the fingers out as far as you can. Chin up and then out to the left and down we're exhaling. 
moving in out to the right and up. Take it over again. I'm going to do another total of five, so I think we've got about three more. We're not rushing, just taking the time to enjoy the feeling, the sensation of the stretch across the, the neck and the shoulders. If you're on your last one, you're going to join up at the end with a chin up and a breath in and then out. And if you need to take again some movement just to kind of get comfortable, um, that's fine. Uh, so our next movement now, we're going to look a little bit more at some um, lateral flexion of the spine. So. Um, we're going to again have our fingers reaching out to the sides and we're going to take our left arm up and overhead so as we breathe in we're extending upwards the spine the chest is lifted and then as we exhale we're going to bring the whole of the body to bend over to the side and your arm will follow so the left arm should be over the right side and if you want to, you can look up a little. If you want to look down, you can. Maybe that feels comfortable. And then as we inhale, to return back to the start position, we're kind of straight, straight, lengthening out the spine again. And then lifting the arm to reach up overhead as we inhale. And then as we exhale again, we're moving the right arm over to the left side and just reaching over as far as we can without lifting the right bum cheek from the floor. So we want to be nice and grounded on the mat or the carpet or the floor, wherever you're sitting. You can look up and feel a nice stretch in the side of the body or look down. Maybe feel a stretch, a little bit more activity in the neck. And then breathing in to return back to the start position. Take a moment, we're going to do two more of those. So, when you're ready, fingers reach out, left arm up, breathing in, elongate, breathing out, side bend. It's okay if your arm's up here, you just do what you can. There's a lot of muscle structures that can restrict um, movement or determine it. Everybody's different. Breathing in to come back to neutral, breathing out to relax and again right arm up, breathing in and then out, side body, side flexion. Take a nice deep breath here and then when you breathe in again make sure you elongate the spine again. So one last one here, breathing in, arm up, breathing out, bending to the side. Maybe take a nice deep breath here and out and then breathing in, we can rank up, back up to sitting. One last time, this time right arm up, breathing in, and then breathing out, bending to the side to the left. And then we come back to, to the middle, breathing in. And then we can take a moment again just to move, assimilate, <laughs> and um, move on to the next action which will be for the wrists so this movement you can do either with your arms out extended if you want a little bit of a shoulder workout uh, just to get the kind of upper body continue the, the motion that we already started in the spine um, or you can do this movement where your arms feel if they feel a bit more comfortable maybe even down by your sides you can do that 
So as you can see, I'm already kind of indicating what the movement will be. We're going to take a fist kind of uh, hand positioning out to the sides. And firstly, we want to take a, de a deep breath in and imagine that we're trying to push two imaginary walls on either side. So we've got our fists against two walls here and we're just trying to push them away as we exhale. Maybe take another deep breath and then again push as we exhale. So you should feel a nice stretch in your, in your forearms and your wrists. Maybe the shoulders are starting to warm a little as well. So the, the circular motion we're going to do in a fist, a tight, tight fist with the hands, um, we want to draw a circle or imagine that you're, you've got a cloth, a dishcloth, and you're cleaning the insides of a, a dirty sauce pan. <laughs> So we really want to use every every degree of our range of movement in our wrists. So really, if you need to close your eyes and imagine, or we'll just focus on that motion, we're going in just one direction at the movement at the moment. So you can choose which direction that is, and your breathing should be nice and relaxed. We're not holding the breath. We're just we maybe do ten of these kind of circular motions. And I can feel my shoulders are working already, so I hope you can too, feel your shoulders working. You can stop in any point where you feel like you need to spend a little time just kind of ironing out the, the creases. Um, if you've got a stubborn stain on the saucepan. Um, and then we're going to change direction, so if you want to take a moment, I'm going to just shake out my shoulders just to relax. If you're here you, you might feel like you're ready to go. And then set up again so we're changing direction so we're cleaning the pan in the opposite direction. Feels completely different. If you need to lower your arms from you know your shoulders are working a little too hard for this time in the morning, if it's the morning for you, you can. We're just doing 10, 10 repetitions here, just fully engaging in every range, every degree of your range of motion. And then when you're ready, just take a moment to relax. And I'm afraid if your shoulders are tired, we're going to be doing another <laughs> movement at that end range uh, for the shoulder. So. Um, if you do have any shoulder pain, then maybe just skip this one. But um, we're going, or, or perhaps repeat the previous exercise um, while we go through a shoulder range of movement um, exercise. So again, we're taking the arms out to the sides, but this time we're going to connect the breath pattern with the movement. So we're going to breathe in and imagine that you're holding a cup. Okay, so we want to spill the cup. We want to empty or pour the contents of the cup backwards, okay? But you can use, I quite like to have my hand in fist for this, but you can have your hands as though you're holding uh, a cup or a can. And as you inhale as well, and rotate your arms backwards or your whole shoulder, you should feel a lift in your chest. So we're lifting up the chest and emptying the cans backwards. And then as we exhale, we're moving in the opposite direction. So we're emptying the cans forwards. And the chest should move in the opposite direction. So it's almost like you're creating a hollow in the front of your body. So I'm going to turn to the side just to demonstrate. Now, if, if sitting's not comfortable as well, you could be kneeling for this. You could even be standing if that's comfortable for you or sitting on a chair. So our hands are out to the sides and we're holding the can, a breath in, we're tipping the can or the, the cup of water backwards, chest is lifted and as we breathe out we're pouring the can or cup forwards and we want to rotate the shoulders as far as we can, holding out the, the shape of the chest you can see as we exhale. Nice, slow and steady. We're going to do five in total of this. So I've got three more, so I'm going to go through the motions of 
maybe this time I'm going to use a fist this time because it's a completely different sensation in the forearm. So breathing in, emptying the cans backwards, lifting the chest, breathing out in the opposite direction, emptying the cans forwards. You can really feel, if you've got your hands in fists, you should be able to feel this in the shoulder blades and across the shoulder blades at the back. Two more. Nice slow and steady movement linking with the breath. Breathing in and lifting up. Breathing out, moving forwards. And if you've finished and you're ready, we will come to meet and we're going to be standing this time. So the next movement is a hip hinge movement. Um, now, if you are near a wall, that's a useful point of reference. Um, and I'll demonstrate the hip hinge movement first. We're going to be starting on two feet. We're actually going to work our way to a single leg balance exercise. So if you want to come to stand, uh, next to a wall. You want to be about a foot away. This helps just to sort of drill in the, the motion. So a hip hinge movement involves, um, it's, not, it's very different to a forward fold in that we're not hinging and our weight isn't coming forwards. A hip hinge movement is where our hips shift backwards so that our centre of mass is directly over our midfoot. So this gives us a bit more stability than a forward fold. A forward fold, you're kind of allowing your body to move further forward. So that's why having a wall is useful. So if you need this just to kind of get used to the motion, if you can see yourself, if you've got a, um, a way of recording, this can help too. But the hip hinge, you can place your hands just out of the way, basically. You could have them crossed at the chest or at the hands on the hips. And we just want to uh, move the hips in a backwards motion until we hit the wall, basically. The knees can be slightly bent, but the back should be quite straight. So um, the idea is to fire up the hamstrings for this exercise. So we're taking feet are waist uh, hip width or narrower, so maybe side by side. and. As we breathe in, we're elongating the spine. And then as we exhale, I'm going to put my arms across my chest, we are moving the hips backwards, keeping the spine nice and straight. And we're stopping just around when we start to feel the hamstrings tighten up. We're not lifting the toes, we're not on the balls of our feet. We're simply at a position where if we go any further, we might feel a com compromise in our spinal kind of straightness. And then as we breathe in, we come back up, we squeeze the glutes. So let's do 10 of these. So elongating the spine, we breathe in, and then as we exhale, hips come back. Knees are slightly bent, and we just want to feel that stretch in the hamstrings just before we come back up. So breathing in to elongate, and then exhaling as we move the hips backwards. Breathing in to come back up. Elongate. So if you can count, maybe as you move downwards, you count three seconds or four seconds in each direction just to control the movement. So three, two, one, down, and then the movement back up can be nice and quick. Nice slow and steady breath. We're not holding the breath. You might be feeling the hamstring starting to fire up. So I've got maybe, I think this is around seven, so we're gonna go for two more. Last one, breathing in to elongate the spine. And breathing out, shift the hips backwards, and then in again to come back up to start. Brilliant. Um, 
So we're going to make this a little bit more challenging now. So you can take a moment to catch your breath. Just watch the way that I demonstrate this next movement. So I'm actually, uh, I'm going to face this direction. Um, so in order to do a single leg progression of this, we need to have, again, the same starting stance with our feet hip width or narrower. Um, but we're going to shift the weight after we've regained our kind of composure, um, breathing in, elongating the spine. We'll shift the weight onto the left foot and then bring the right foot out behind us to steady our balance. But essentially, we're going to be hinging just on the left leg. So this right leg is going to lift behind us. So we elongate the spine, breathing in. And then as we exhale, we're going to squeeze the glutes on the right side to lift the leg and then shift the hip backwards in the same way as we were when we had both feet doing the hip hinge but this time lifting the right leg so we're keeping the right glute engaged to keep that right leg lifted breathing in as we elongate breathing out as we hip hinge left leg left hip sorry goes backwards right leg it's extended out behind so we're going to aim for about 10 of these. So when you're ready, if you haven't already joined in, take up your hip width stance. Elongate the spine and kick your right leg out behind you. And then slight bend in the left knee. Exhale to shift the left hip back. Right glutes stay engaged. We want this, the shoulder blades squeezing together so that we're not compromising our stance. Um, our spinal integrity so we're nice and supported through the trunk again you can take the three seconds in each direction if it helps or at least three seconds in the downward phase three two one we just want to make sure the movement is nice and controlled Take the last one. And you should be feeling the muscles in the hip really on the, on the, on the leg that's supporting. So once you've kind of recovered from the shock of that, we're going to do this on the opposite side. And um, so we'll switch feet. So we're going to take this time, elongating the spine on the breath in. We're going to shift the weight onto the right foot left leg comes back this time so we've got a kind of a, a supporting kind of leg it's the right side to take the weight and with a slight bend in the right knee the left leg we squeeze the glutes to lift it and we shift the right hips back to allow us to do a hip hinge breathing in to elongate the spine breathing out over three two one and back to the starting position. You might notice a difference in your balance between the left and right. I certainly have better balance when I'm doing this on my left leg. So my right hip, I have an injury and I notice sometimes if I've done enough balance work, my right leg balance exercise is a lot more challenging. It's just more motivation to keep doing more work with it though. Show myself up here. So we're aiming for 10 of these, so not rushing. Remembering to keep a slight bend in the right knee. You should be feeling it in the right hip. Nice steady breath, focusing on something your balance is letting you down here. Try fixing your focus on something a couple of feet in front of you. Something ideally that's well illuminated. Let's do two more. Last one. 
Let me brush it. Awesome. Lovely, okay. So, um, we're going to come to sit now. It would be grateful to know. Um, so, if you want to grab a seat back on the, on the mat. Uh, we're going to close up this session now. We've had some good balance challenging exercises. So, if you want to place your hands on your knees, or you can place your hand on your chest and one hand on your stomach. We're going to reconnect with the breath before we finish this session. So if it helps, you can close your eyes. And we just want to bring the attention to the breath. Noticing whether you're breathing in through your nose, whether you're breathing out through your nose or your mouth. You don't need to change the breath. I'm just curious to know how is it different from the start of the session? Maybe you're breathing a little bit faster. Maybe your breath is smoother or more juddery. Are you breathing a little bit deeper? Is the breath going to your stomach or your abdomen? Or is it going to the chest? So if your mind's wondering and you're already rushing off thinking about what you need to do today. Just bring it back to the breath. We're going to have three more breaths here, so to focus on the breath. Three more breaths. When you're ready, you can open your eyes and come back into the present moment. So that concludes today's session. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you'd like to attend a live gentle movement session online, you can go to the Move Well Clinic website and book online there. The website is move-well.co.uk. Sessions are free. Um, but if you'd like to make a contribution to help me keep running these classes and make them available for people who need them most, uh, especially at a low cost and free, then you can head over to the Move Well Patreon page which will be linked below. I look forward to seeing you again in class soon.